Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the best Rose Gold laptops for women in the market for this year. First, we're going to show you our top 10 best picks, and we'll talk about what you should look for before buying a Rose Gold laptops for women. You can find links to all the products we mentioned in this video down in the description below. Let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Razorbook 13 Quartz Pink. The Razorbook 13, available in Quartz Pink, is an excellent pink laptop by basically any standard. Razer is most famous for their premium gaming products, but their expertise and dedication to quality is evident even when making something that isn't explicitly for gaming. Lately, they've been making huge strides in the area of ultra-portable laptops, with this latest model being a major improvement over previous years. The first thing you'll notice is how well constructed the Book 13 is. It uses an all-aluminum construction that feels really solid and premium in your hands. In addition, it's an extremely light and compact laptop, coming in at just 0.6 inches, 15.24 thick, and weighing a hair over 3 pounds, 3.9 pounds, slash 1.4 kg. That makes it a little heavier than the LG Grimm, one of this year's best laptops. Not appearing on this list because of the lack of a pink option, but still extremely compact and portable. Besides that, the Book 13 is unique among Razer's laptops as the only one to not include a dedicated GPU, instead using Intel Iris E, which is integrated graphics processing capability offered by the Iceman processor. The quad-core Iceman processor is more powerful than you'll typically find in slim, portable laptops like this, which is what makes this an extremely well-performing Ultrabook. The 11th generation Iceman performs really well, and the cooling capacity that Razer has built into this allows you to get a much better frame rate in gaming than expected from something without a dedicated GPU. It's still a little underpowered for serious gaming, streaming, or video editing. However, it offers plenty of performance for everyday tasks and some serious multitasking. Now, the display is not only excellent, but it's a marked improvement over last year's model. It's a 1920x1200 touchscreen display, which is both sharp and gives you some extra space and flexibility to work with. On top of that, it has a full 100% sRGB coverage and gets up to 500 nits of brightness, making it one of the few laptops you could conceivably use outside. The webcam isn't exceptional, but it will perform well enough for video conferencing. Moving on to the next at number two with Asus VivoBook S15 Punk Pink. The Asus VivoBook is another excellent all-around laptop, although it's one that's going to be a bit friendlier to your budget than the top choice for this list. This model of the S15 comes with a metallic finish that Asus refers to as punk pink. The base is more of rose gold, which is both easy on the eyes and will do a good job of concealing any wear or minor damage like scratches. The lid is a metallic hot pink, a real standout among other pink laptops that are trying for a more subtle maybe it's pink in the right light sort of design. One thing that will make the VivoBook S15 a more attractive choice for a lot of users is the larger display. The 15.6-inch FHD 1920x1080 display is going to make the scale of most of your applications feel a lot more natural, and you won't be struggling to make out fine details. It's not a very bright display. At about 250 nits, that's not uncommon for laptops in the price range, but it will make working direct light more difficult. The sRGB coverage only reaches about 60%, so if you need something you can do detailed creative work on, this won't be as strong of a choice as either of the Razors or the MSI Prestige later on this list. Further, Asus includes a unique touchpad, combining the trackpad with a touchscreen with a variety of preloaded apps, like a calculator, media controls, and toolbars. It's an interesting concept, but one that Asus employs to greater effect in their dual models. Unless you have an external mouse, switching between touchscreen and trackpad mode is going to cost a lot more time than it saves. On the topic of controls, the keyboard isn't as sturdy or as tactile as it could be, so if your work-slash-school day involves a lot of typing, you might not be able to reach an optimum word-per-minute typing speed. Performance-wise, the VivoBook S15 is solid. You save a bit of money with the step back to a 10th gen if a processor but it still performs well for multitasking and general tasks. For a laptop at this price point, we'd really like to see more RAM, and the included 8GB can only be upgraded to 12GB, which will limit more intensive use. 
The number three position is held by HP Laptop 15 Rose Gold. The HP 15 series encompasses a wide range of options, from multifunctional mid-levels to extremely budget-friendly choices like the 15 F25 from Rose Gold model. In fact, it's at the budget levels where HP really shines, creating well-balanced machines that seem like they cost a good $50, 100 less than they should. In this case, you're getting a fair amount of power for the price, comparable to the much more expensive VivoBook in a lot of ways. The processor is a 4-core AMD Ryzen 5, which has a lower clock rate than similar Earthers, but it's not a difference you're going to notice unless you're really putting this under a really heavy load. Additionally, you get 8 GB of RAM, which is enough for the multitasking that will go into everyday use, and a 256 GB SSD. That's typically more than enough for what you'll be able to do with this laptop, especially if you incorporate an external hard drive. Now, the HP 15 is constructed primarily of plastic, making it a little bit lighter than the VivoBook, but not by enough to make a difference. It's 0.70 inches, 17.9 mm thick, and weighs 3.84 pounds, 1.74 fork. Next at number 4, we have Razer Blade 15 Quartz Pink. It should be noted that the Razer Blade 15 that we're looking at for this review is a 2019 model. So while you'll still get a lot of the signature Razer goodness, you won't be getting the most current components, and it might not be in stock everywhere. The 2019 Razer Blade 15 made serious waves when it was first released because of the addition of an NVIDIA 1660 GPU. The 1660 is a more affordable and mobile-focused GPU, which put Razer's Blade series in reach of a wider audience for the first time. And it's still a great pink laptop if you can get your hands on it. Even though it's a slightly older model, it will still run all the latest releases, some of them at max settings, but it will struggle to bring 60 FPS for demanding games like AC, Valhalla, Cyberpunk, or even Red Dead Redemption 2. Newer shooters like COD or Battlefield will hover around the 70-80 FPS mark, and major multiplayer games like League, Fortnite, or Counter-Strike will break 100 FPS without issue. If you do want something that will run this and next year's games at 60 FPS you may want to consider one of the 2021 Razer Blade models. Just be aware that they'll run you a bit extra and aren't available in pink. Gaming laptops are also able to pull double duties workstations for creative professionals and are usually the only laptops capable of performing video editing. The Razer Blade 15 has a 6-core Isofn processor and 16 GB of RAM, which is more than enough for gaming and reasonable for streaming or editing. Storage-wise, you get a 512 gb SSD. The number 5 position is held by MSI Prestige 14. Similar to Razer, MSI primarily makes gaming laptops. Their stripped-down, straightforward approach to construction and specs typically delivers a versatile gaming experience for a better price than brands like Razer or ROG. Since gaming laptops are typically the only laptops with a dedicated GPU, this will typically make them a better choice for creative professionals than the average laptop, which processes graphics through the CPU. The MSI Prestige 14, available in gorgeous rose pink, is all of this to the letter. Whether you're going to opt for a secondary display for more detail is up to you. The serious professionals will likely already have a desktop workstation and will be looking for something that can be used on the go. The display on the MSI Prestige 14 is only 1000 day type, but has excellent color accuracy with 100% sRGB gamma and edging out its nearest Razer analog by a couple of points on the Adobe RGB gamma. It's not very bright, which is, unfortunately, a point against it if you are going to find yourself using it in well-lit areas. Under the hood, you have a quad-core 11th Gen Isofn processor, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 graphics card, 16 of RAM, and a full TB SSD. The hard drive is the largest you are typically going to find in a laptop, but the processor and RAM are at the minimum of what's typically suggested for creating or editing video. The number 6 position is dominated by Asus F110. The key to not being disappointed by a budget laptop is setting the right expectations. It can be difficult to not see the specs of a $300 laptop as disappointing when it's on the list next to $1000 plus machines capable of high FPS gaming or video editing. In an ideal world, what you'll get out of a budget laptop is something that will perform basic productivity tasks, word processing, spreadsheets, etc., and possibly even handle some light multitasking. 
Some budget laptops will slow to a crawl if you have WordPad and your web browser open at the same time. So, how does the Asus F110, the first laptop on our list available in two shades of pink, rose pink, and rose gold, hold up? As it turns out, pretty well, the Intel Celeron processor it uses manages to boot quickly and has enough power to handle all of your basic productivity tasks. It's a bit light on memory, only 4 of RAM, and a 128 SSD, but that's by no means the worst loadout you'll find in this price bracket. It's obviously not going to do much in the way of gaming, outside of maybe some really light games like FTL or Minecraft, and any creative tasks besides really basic photo touch-ups are going to be out of reach as well. Besides that, Asus really cut back on the display. It's one of the only laptops you can still get in 2022 with a 1366 x display. It doesn't look terrible on a 14-inch screen, but if you're used to the ultra-detailed look of FHD or OOT screens, it's definitely going to be a step back. It's also not very bright, maxing out at 200 nits, well below the average even in this price range. On a related note, the camera is almost shockingly bad. It has an extremely old-fashioned 6, 140 x 180 resolution and is terrible on both color and lighting, making it unsuitable for anything else than just checking in on Zoom meetings. Moving on to the next at number 7 with HP Stream 14 Rose Gold. The HP Stream 14 and the Asus F410 aren't the exact same laptops, but at a glance. The only thing that really separates them is the logo on the lid, like the F410 you're going to be fairly limited in what you can do. But it will perform the basic task that you're looking for out of a budget pink laptop, like web browsing, word processing, and media streaming. This makes it an ideal choice for students, especially younger ones. If it's not overloaded, the Stream 14 boots itself up quickly and launches all of its programs with minimal lag or delay. It uses a dual-core Intel Celeron processor and 4 of RAM, which will allow for some light multitasking. We wouldn't expect to be able to leave a game running in the background while you do schoolwork. Not that there are many games you could play on it, but if you want to listen to music while you work or, or have a few tabs open for research while you write a report, it will still respond fairly quickly. The display here is another 1366-768, meaning it's not going to be very sharp and you probably won't want to use it for detailed photo work though brightness and color fidelity will probably be the bigger issue with that. It maxes out at 220 nits, which is slightly better than the Asus F110, but only technically. Besides that, the webcam is definitely better, with a more conventional 720 resolution. If you or your student are still doing most classes via Zoom, then the better camera will make it easier to stay engaged. The number 8 position is held by Lenovo Chromebook C340 Sandpink. For a lot of casual users, a Chromebook is going to be the best choice when it comes to purchasing a laptop. In case you are not familiar, Chromebooks are simple laptops, often closer in performance to a tablet or similar mobile device, that uses Chrome OS a lighter, web-based operating system instead of Windows. For a lot of people, using the computer consists entirely of web browsing, checking emails, and occasionally streaming video. And so a lot of the functionality that you get from a full Windows laptop is going unused. Lenovo makes several Chromebooks, and like the rest of their product line, they are highly functional and very competitively priced. However, they tend to be kind of uninspiring in the design department. So the C340, available in a sleek rose gold finish that they call sand pink, was a bit of a surprise. They put in a little extra effort, rounded out the corners, and made something that actually looks exciting when you open the box. Because of the obvious similarity to mobile performance, a lot of the best Chromebooks in 2022 are two-in-one, combing a touchscreen and a 360 hinge to allow your laptop to also function as a tablet. The C340 does this as well. The one thing Lenovo hasn't quite managed to escape is the bulkiness. Next at number 9 we have Golden Golf Mini Laptop. If you've decided to get your small daughter a laptop, picking out the right one can be hard. You probably want something cheap but not so cheap that it's going to break the first time it's bumped, dropped, or sneezed on. The Golden Gold Mini Laptop is regarded as kind of a gimmick in a lot of tech circles, and to be fair, anything this small is designed more as a fun, creative pursuit rather than anything that's going to have serious functionality. That being said, if you're still doing remote schooling, 
or need something to let the kids watch cartoons, or YouTube on while you're using your computer, the main TV, the Golden Gold Mini is kind of perfect, and it comes in three fun colors, including pink. In fact, almost everything about this that we'd normally consider a downside in a laptop becomes a selling point if you approach this as a cheap laptop that you can give a four or six year old. The huge bezels and chunky plastic construction protect the screen and provide extra insulation against being dropped or knocked onto the floor. Additionally, the 1208x140 display is all you need for cartoons and kids' YouTube. The big, blocky keys with minimal feedback would be frustrating for an adult to type on, but they are perfect for small hands hunt and pecking their way around a keyboard. Finally, the number 10 position is dominated by Dara V14s. Dara has been around for a while, but until recently has primarily been operating in Eastern markets, so you might not be aware of them. Despite the low name recognition, the Dara V14s makes our list because of its excellent construction and good performance for the price. The V14s uses an ultra-slim aluminum construction that produces a laptop that weighs a mere 2.64 pounds, 1.2, and is an industry-leading 0.59 inches, 15 thick. That doesn't leave a lot of room for thermals, but since aluminum is a lot better at dissipating heat, and the V14s doesn't have a lot of power to begin with, that never really seemed to be an issue during testing. For your money, you get a quad-core seller and processor and 12 GB of RAM, enough for multitasking, all basic productivity tasks, and even some light gaming or creative work. The FHE display gets good color fidelity and slightly above average brightness, so it could feasibly be a travel laptop for creative pros, though creators with serious computing needs will probably want something a bit more powerful. Although the construction on the case is very good, the keyboard and trackpad are a definite shortcoming. The keyboard is spongy and tends to wobble, and the trackpad is about the same. It can make sustained data entry or word processing use frustrating and not as fast. In an ironic twist, one of the biggest sacrifices Dara made in creating their ultra-portable laptop is the battery life. The V14s could only consistently hit 3-4 hours of light use, which is a huge drawback in something so clearly designed for maximum portability. That's all for today. We upload computer and accessories product review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.